start. They'd be playing all day. Kevin Braswell early with less than 10 seconds to go in the half. Gerald Riley is there for the tip in at the buzzer. This is the start of things, Digger, in the second half. Let's go to the Irish. Chris Thomas takes this game over. This is the maturity of this freshman guard. In between, up and under, Twister goes oh. in and scores. Dribbles through the entire team. Thomas makes things happen even later. Baseline jumper, another two. 22 points, 12 assists for the rookie for the Irish. Hoy is coming back. Drew Hall, 4-3. Oh, the foul. Georgetown ties it on a four-point play, 78-78. Later, still tied up. You see 84-84, five and change left. Kevin Braswell, a chance to win it. No, won't go. With time winding down, tried to dribble through, went the length of the floor to get the shot blocked. Going overtime, Irish up by two. Matt Carroll to Torian Jones with the lead pass. Oh, the foul. He had seven, Irish up by four. Game tied again. Again, this is an OT, first OT. Braswell, another chance to win it. Off balance, went off the wrong foot, chucked it up, wouldn't go. And we're going to double overtime, Tigger. Oh, double overtime. Let's see what happens now. What about Mike Sweeney? Can we get him the ball inside? Get it in. Watch the dribble screen over the top. Reversal pass. Look inside. Maybe a three-point play, but two for sure. Later, we got a tie game, 97-97, the second OT. Remember, no, Braswell, last shot. How deep is that? About four seconds left. Digger will talk about that. Braswell put it up, wouldn't go. We're going to triple overtime. Late in the third OT, tied up again. Riley driving, block. Ryan Humphrey got a piece. Braswell, the prayer, and it goes in. But, oh, no, not yet. Not so fast, my friend. Watch closely, watch the replay. After the, watch the shot clock in the corner because he beat the game clock, didn't beat the shot clock. Goes up, goes in, but no, no good. We're going to quadruple overtime. In the fourth OT, Sweetney would foul out. There goes the big man, Hoyas down one, Drew Hall driving. Humphrey is there again, swats it away. Ensuing possession for the Irish, Matt Carroll, good look. Knocks down a three, Irish by four, and that'll just about do it. Longest game in Notre Dame history. They had three overtimes in 93. Also had them in 28 and 20 and 33, but no kids digger was not coaching. Back. Big difference on the boards today for the Irish. They got pounded in South Bend, but today they controlled the board 64-54. That's set up for this big win for Notre Dame. A Mike Sweetney, 35 points, 20 rebounds, six assists. It's not enough in quadruple overtime. I don't, I don't think I've been involved in a in a crazier game than uh, this game, and really so many points in that game that I could probably talk about. I, I thought our guys played with their hearts out. Uh, I don't know how many lead changes or how many tie scores we came about, but I mean, I, the emotion on this team, I mean, it was going. Every time I took a shot, everybody still was like, you know, just it, it'll fall at one point, it'll fall, it'll fall. So, I mean, the emotion was there. To, Everything was there. They just pulled it out. And you see here, it is a Big East record breaker for most overtimes, combined points, field goals, attempts for one team. And also, the first 30-20 game, Mike Sweetney with the big game, 35 points, 20 rebounds, and that's with a guy who fouled out. Second half, Villanova down by four. Gary Buchanan, after the ball gets back to him for a three, he had 20 points. Wildcats within one, 54-53. Villanova down by four, about a minute and a half to go. Gary Buchanan was six for 11 from three. Now UCLA gets the ball back. That's Jason Capono waiting to get into the game. Their leading scorer doesn't get in. Without him, Villanova, the pressure, they get the ball back. Villanova gets the stop. So 25 seconds to go, a rough way to go. Brooks Sales drives, foul by Dan Goodzerich. Sales would knock down both free throws. Villanova takes a 58-57 lead. Let's go back now on Wednesday. UCLA, they've done it before against USC. Billy Knight at the buzzer with his team down, knocks down a three. Could he do it? Again, he'd have a shot, Digger. Well, you got to go with a guy that got you there Thursday night against Southern Cal. Billy Knight is open. It's his rhythm. He throws it up. It doesn't go in. He had time to go to the basket. Gets a loose ball rebound. Should have kept his dribble, but forced it himself again with five seconds. Didn't get a good shot. Villanova wins this game. Big upset, not just for Villanova, but for the Big East over to Pac-10.
So 58, 57. In his defense, he did mention that, you know, I did, thought we were out of time, and I chucked that second one up. A key for Villanova. Most Bob Knight, Bob Knight in first year at Texas Tech. Major improvements, of course. Andre Emmett drives. He was 6 for 17 from the floor. Red Raiders had a five-point lead uh, halfway through that first half. Emmett, again, 15 points. Uh, up by five, but turnovers will get to him, David. Turnovers get to him. When you turn it over, that means transition. Watch Kirk Heinrich take this steal. Heinrich himself makes it happen, and then he gets oh, fouled for oh. three-point play later. Another bad pass. Things happen again. Transition, easy game. Takes it inside, Bushy sends it, gets it to Aaron Miles for the layup, yes, again. And they go up 52-38 in that blowout. They're running here in the second half. Jayhawks open this up. Miles waits, nice feed. Boshi on the break, 61-45. Kansas spreads it out. Next possession, Jayhawks with a three-on-one. And at this point, Bob Knight might have something to talk about. Drew Gooden to Miles. Again, the big lead, yes, on a three-on-one. He'd be upset there. Roy Williams in the big lead. I thought he was working it today as well. Texas Tech would come back. Marcus Shropshire, 4-3. Red Raiders get within 10. Well, Williams concerned at this point, but uh, Kansas, uh, they're very deep. They would uh, stop. Deep in transition, making it happen again. Miles takes that long pass. Heinrich takes it, scores. Oh. He's fouled again because they go to the basket hard. This is a great play coming up. Long pass. Transition. Breaking it away. Heinrich, career high, 28 points. Great pass again from Miles. And finally, to Drew Gooden inside. Yeah, he gets his double double. Bob Knight knows it. 108 81 final score. But it was the runs in both halves, which really Texas Tech could not handle. Yeah, 10 0 now in the Big 12. Kansas spreads it out yeah, after the game. Bob Knight was just gushing over the Jayhawks. They give up a bucket, they come right back at you, uh, they throw the ball away, they're all over you defensively. Uh, I mean, it is a, there is a, a relentless quality uh, to the way they play found rarely in teams, I think. Does this team hit the wall? Because we got beat by one of the best teams in the country. Two losses and two injuries. Geez, that's, I mean, God damn, we're the first team in basketball history to lose two games. He's taking it well. I think top 25 on the road. That was Steve Lepore in for the injured Josh Howard. Lepore hits a three. Wake Forest by one, but it's early. 20 to 20, and Steve Logan would pull up. He was four for nine from three. Cincinnati by three. Next possession for Cincinnati. Emmanuel McElroy kicks this out. Field Williams deep. He was three for five from three. Cincinnati by four. Next possession for Cincinnati. Logan again. And Cincinnati starts to open this up. Uh, Logan was everywhere. Well, the transition game is what Cincinnati does very, very well. And that's because they rebound so well. And when Logan's set, gets open, if your hands are low, he's just going to drill the three. 30.7 assists for Steve Logan and a big win on the road. But look at this again. Lob pass inside. Makes it happen to Max Eel. Not done yet. Transition. Look down. Great bounce pass. Again, Max out. Tough points. Steve Logan. Watch the bounce pass. I can't, that's a great pass the length of the floor when you look at Max Eel making the easy points. And Wake Forest got within seven here, Digger. Logan pulls up. He knocks down a three. And it's over. It's all over. Logan, 30 points. It's also, again, you know, fundamentals, 10 for 10 from the free throw line, Ed. Most impressive thing in the past week is Cincinnati went 2-1 and one on a road trip at Marquette, at Charlotte, at Wake Forest, in which Bob Huggins said this might have been the toughest three-game road trip that he has had in his coaching career. And Wake Forest has got to get refocused. They're at Clemson, the 13th, and still have coming up with Virginia and Duke coming at Wake. Yeah, Wake 0-5 now against the top 10. What about Duke? Duke and Georgia Tech. Head-to-head, -head, Jason Williams, the ACC leaders, and uh, putting out a clinic. Williams running the floor, Carlos Boozer, Duke by two, but it's early. Soon after, Mike Dunleavy, a tremendous game, 23 points, nine rebounds, five steals, three assists. Nice to get in everywhere. Uh, back and forth, lay it back in. Williams, eight assists, Duke by, oh, a bunch there, and it spread it out. Dunleavy across the lane, knocks that down more from Williams. Pulls up, nobody near him, knocks down a three. And yeah, from three, 54% for Duke, 13 for 24. The route is on, Williams, again, he had 28. Next possession, Williams to Dunleavy. He's got another three, 84-51 at this point. Well, the first half, you take Boozer, Williams, and Dunleavy, they scored 35 points. 
Georgia Tech has 34, and that was on that 20 to 7 run at the end of the half. But typical of what Duke does to you. Forces 18 turnovers, and Duke comes up with 26 points. That really hurt Georgia Tech. I'll tell you, both Williams and Dunleavy, 8 for 12 from the floor, both 5 for 8 from 3. It's an easy win. Again, Dunleavy, tremendous numbers up and down, and Duke throttles Georgia Tech. All right, go to the Big East, UConn and St. John's. Surprise, surprise, St. John's. A little contact under the basket. A lot of contact under the basket. The body's flying. Jim Calhoun disagrees with the caller. Both, both throw him out. Does he have to serve the next one, maybe? Both officials will toss him out. Out he goes. So out Calhoun ejected. Just under 16 seconds to go in the game. St. John's by three. Anthony Glover misses the free throw. Misses two of them. Misses two of them. One more free throw. It wouldn't go. At the other end, Karan Butler tries to three. He's fouled. He's going to shoot three. I mean, St. John's had this all but one, and UConn came back. Later, Butler puts it up. All right, he's got it. That's one. He's going to shoot three. That's got to be tough, guys, hitting all three. Hits two. Butler's smooth, though. He knows. Third for the tie at the Garden. The UConn man hits it. Karan Butler ties it up. St. John's, oh, not done yet. Marcus Hatton spinning. Nice look. Oh, go, go to overtime. It had to be tough. You go to overtime after you had the game all but one. Marcus Hatton misses. A little work in the boards at this point. Uh, UConn just seems to be exhausted. St. John's does hold on. Marcus Hatton, a career high 34 points. Again, they had this all but one, and UConn snuck it in. And hidden in the box score, Travis Stanley did a great game. He had a great game. He had 10 points, hit a big three. And look at St. John's now, 16 and 7. We're talking about that Big East bubble. But they still got to go to Miami, to Villanova. They got Notre Dame at home, hottest team in the Big East. And they got a non league game at Duke. I was impressed with St. John's, though. They really punished UConn offensive rebounds. So that was a difference. Prince looking to avenge Wednesday's loss to Tennessee. First half, Prince coming out firing. Cliff Hawkins to Prince. Knocks down a three. Wildcats by five. Later in the first, Keith Bogans to Prince. Uh, spotted up inside. More from Prince. Kentucky up by nine from three. He was four for four from three in the first half. Second half, Jermaine Williams goes up. Watch Prince. Swats that away. Six block shots in the game for Tayshawn Prince. Tremendous. Now, Williams gets another shot at this. Going to go up. He knows he's there. No, he's not blocking that. Oh, yeah, blocking that. Another look. Williams had to go in all the way. Went in hard. Got it to go. But Kentucky later up by 18. Prince, watch these spots his man. Nicely done. Eric Daniels, the back door. 68-56, the final. Kentucky held LSU scoreless for five and a half minutes in that second half. How huge is this for Kentucky? They finished with four of their final six SEC games at home, although two of the road games are pretty tough, at Georgia, February 16th, and then at Vanderbilt. The only negative I saw was LSU controlling the boards, 42-34, and that's been a weakness for Kentucky all year in their losses. Keeping the SEC, Vanderbilt at Florida. Billy Donovan's Gators tied atop the SEC East coming into this one. How some three-point shooting here, David? Oh, let's start with Justin Hamilton. Can he shoot threes? I think so. This is what they do to you. Find you on the perimeter way. They reverse the ball so well, they just reverse it, find open people. There's Hamilton again, making it at the buzzer at halftime, 36-25. Well, now let's go back with little Brett Nelson. His turn. Don't leave him open. He hits a big three. How about Matt Bonner? Yeah, I can do it, too. You got it. And finally, maybe Nelson again from the top. Leave him there, inside. Slam it, go. Good. Gators on. Wow. Big hit on threes, 10 for 19. Yeah, Udonis Haslam, you saw him there with the pass. He had 19 points. He was 11 for 13 from the free throw line. Florida, when they lost to Kentucky, said they were out of sync. Well, they've won three straight since then, but look what's ahead. At Georgia, at Ole Miss, at Alabama, at Kentucky. And they still miss a point guard because today, again, 20 turnovers, and as we well know, that is where Teddy Dupay would have been a factor for them all year, and this is a big negative yet with Florida. Guys, let's go back to the Big 12. Oklahoma, Texas A&M. Again, you got top teams, but on the road, being for a tough day. Hollis Price there, the hot in the first half, Digger. Oh, Price time. Anytime you need him open, I'll hit a three. Uncanny how he makes things happen. Dribble in, one-on-one, -on -one, baseline jumper. How about a little transition jumper? Price. Nine in the first half, 12 for the game. Tough game yet. Bernard King blocked by a bunch of guys in there. Oklahoma coming back the other way. 
Ebi Ara up and in. Sooners by nine at that point. Just over a minute to play. AM down by six. Larry Scott for three. Knocks it down. It's a three-point game. 38 seconds left. AM down by five. Scott again for three. Created some space, but it won't go this time. And Oklahoma holds on on the road, 68 to 64. Sooners have won 16 of 17 in this series. The Aggies were 17 for 28 from the free throw line, and that cost them. Believe it, Oklahoma in the race for number one seed out west with Cincinnati. This kind of win still helps. Go to Louisville and Indiana. First half, pick this up. Jared Jeffries playing injured. He's up to block the shot. Falls awkwardly to the ground. Now he came in with a bruised thigh. Can leave with that in a bad ankle. He'd score 11 points, but there, they dig it. Then someone picking up the slack. Yeah, Garrett Odo. Odo just plays his best game ever. 25 points, 11 boards, inside, outside. Finding him, good replay, good reflexes, taking it to the hole. Little baseline jumper here. Anything you need. He's a solid, making it happen. In a career high, 25 in Indiana, getting it all done. Jeffrey's lob, Jeffrey Newton. The Hoosiers by 15. Jeffries had two assists and nine rebounds playing hurt. Odell oh, plays it up. Drips it up and in as it gets dumped down. This is Odell. That was Newton before. And now Odell gets it up and in. So Indiana wins their 10th straight at home. Odell again, 25 and 11 boards. Hoosiers are 16 and 7 and have won 10 straight at home. How about this, though? They're 9 and 2 since Mike Davis blew up after the Butler game and took that $10,000 fine instead of the one game suspension. And there was Spurt team. That 14 to 2 run before halftime really took care of Louisville. And that's why they've got that 15 point win. Really solid team in the Big Ten. This was a very strange game. Purdue and Illinois. Purdue led by 18 at one point in the first half. Did well, 18 the first half, but it comes back to Brian Cook. Same thing happened against Michigan the other night. They're down 13 in the first half. Win that one. Cook takes his game out inside, outside. That's why I love his game. He makes the three. Ball fakes it, goes in for a slam dunk. Solid. 16 points for Illinois. The Purdue still at all had a chance. Down by four, 12 seconds left. The drive. Willie Dean will score, makes it a two-point game. Illinois will have to get this ball inbounds. Now watch closely. Have trouble here. Purdue, the pressure from everywhere, inside, getting the ball back. They get it back, and they get a look. Joe Marshall, no, that was for the win. A three-pointer would have won it, but no. They hold on. The Illini down by 18 in the first half. It was a 24-7 start, 17 unanswered points in the second half stretch, and they win this game 69-67. Well, they're down 18 that first half, but beginning of second half, they hold Purdue scoreless for eight minutes, going a 17-zip run, get that four-point lead, and just hang out. Understand this now, that Lucas Johnson back on that team with his electricity, in my opinion, don't count Illinois out in that Big Ten Conference tournament. They're 6-5 and five right now, and this team still can flat out play when they all come together. Second half, Oregon by three. Freddie Jones guarding a mid to Mir. To Mir. Jones got that blocked on him, but the, he, this freshman would have a tremendous game, Dick. Tamir really turns it around for Cal in the second half. Off the screen, hits a big three. Not afraid to step out. Makes it happen again. Jones picks up this situation. Loose ball. Takes it to Tamir. There are 13 seconds left. Tied up. Jones picks up the loose ball. Comes back. Going up. And Jones, look at that. The lift. No, won't go. Cal rebound. 3.8 left. A chance for Cal. They'd get their shot. The, the chuck, and uh, it's not going. They're going overtime. 89-89. 2.1 seconds to go. Long pass. Jones up. Puts it in. No. We're going to double overtime in double OT. Again, the freshman, Amit Tamir. Guy is averaging 10 points per game. Had 39 in this game. Also sealed it with a big free throw. And Cal beats Oregon 107 to 103. Amit Tamir, not your traditional freshman, was in the Israeli Army. Now we know why Ben Braun was willing to go to court to make sure he was eligible. He was suspended for the first eight games of the season because of the NCAA's amateurism rule. But Oregon losing two and on a row. They overtime time lost to Stanford the other night. This really puts them back as far as the conference because they have a tough schedule coming. They still have to go to Southern Cal and UCLA at the end of the year. Washington State and Arizona. Arizona has taken 20, 33 straight in this rivalry. So they love being reminded of that. Mike Bush 
I was on the football team knocking down a three. Bush had the first 11 points for Washington State. But Arizona gets it going. Jason Gardner, he's a little screen, knocked down a three, part of a 12-0 run. Yeah, just get Luke Walton going, though. I love his game. Anytime he has that ball, oh. he's very dangerous. Look at that. Going to the basket makes it happen there and come back again. Walt, don't leave him up on the perimeter. Don't play him. Fine, I'll shoot the three. Makes that. Walton, 26 in this game. Arizona by 14. Later, Rick Anderson off the screen, nails a three. 34 straight in this series going to Arizona. It's not close, 85 to 68. They're in first place now, Arizona, in that Pac-10. That's a big surprise. Last two weeks, they've been making their move ever since Luke Walton's come back in that lineup after his injury. Oregon State and Stanford. Jim Plunkett is there to watch the game. All-time great for Stanford. Casey Jacobson. The hot hand early on. There's no surprise here, fellas. Well, they only had four points in the first half, so he was really slow after getting 41 the other night in that overtime win over Oregon. Later in the first, Stanford up by seven. Curtis Porchett there in the block. Takes it down. Oof. Ryan Jackson hurt on that. See that Jackson hit with that elbow. He'd later come back into the game. Second half, Oregon State on the break. Floyd North up and in. Beavers within three, but later in the second, Julius Barnes off the steal, takes it up, and in a tough game, score not indicative of how it was really played all throughout, but 77-55 for Oregon State, their ninth straight loss at Maples Pavilion. Now, this is a very tough game as well. Go to Gonzaga and San Diego. Sam Adomo, 4-3. San Diego down by one. Next possession for San Diego. Matt Delzell. For the jumper. Who knew? San Diego by one. Zags down one. Zach Gord. Oh, Zach Gord knocks that down. Yeah, but the icy game, just get it to Dick out. Steps back off that down screen, hits the big three, puts the Zags up four. San Diego within four. Less than 30 seconds to go. They did not let this one go. Tom Liphole nails the three. San Diego within one. You got to give them credit. I mean, they're at home fighting hard. Andre Laws dribbles underneath. That won't go. Gonzaga gets it back, and Gonzaga squeaks on this one, fellas. 77-76. And last season, when the Zags went to San Diego, they only won 72-69. And guess where the West Coast Conference Tournament is this season? It's where? At San Diego. And if the Zags got to play San Diego. But the Zags are waiting for that payback game against Pepperdine when they have to go play <laughs> up north. Mr. Patterson, he knows how to hit a three. Transition, Mississippi State from the three-point line. You got it. Timmy Bauer. Another one knocks down a three. Bulldogs up seven at the half. Coming back, second half. Back go Lear. Hits a three. Bulldogs 12 for 19 from the three-point line. Bulldogs poured it on there. Bowers and the foul. He had 24. Bulldogs win it. 76-62. Digger, Arkansas, and Ole Miss. Aaron Harper for Ole Miss. Oh, Aaron Harper said it's my turn today. Lighting it up from the outside. Bang. Number one, Rebels by five. How about it? Don't leave him there in transition. Harper again. Left wing for three. Rebels up by 11. Harper alone again. Five for nine on threes. Career high, 26 points. Ole Miss, 79-67. We go to Georgia and Auburn. Second half, it's tied up. Tough game. Pick it up here. Adam Harrington going up for the three. Ties it at 60 apiece. But off the ball, Kyle Davis and Steve Thomas will get into a fight by the Auburn bench. Both players would be ejected. Both players suspended one game by the SEC. Tight game. Three seconds to go. Auburn by two. Marcus, Marcus Daniels converts the free throw. It's a three-point game. Then the steal. And then at the buzzer, and that'll do it. Auburn wins it 75 to 72. Tennessee and South Carolina buzz Peterson. Two technicals ejected from the game. So what did he miss? Jamel Bradley sparking a run. Hits the three. That's what he does at about 44%. More. The dish. Aaron Lucas to Bradley. South Carolina up by 20. Next possession, Jamel Bradley. This time feeds to Lucas, part of a 17-4 run. South Carolina wins it going away, 72. We to start things off with Minnesota and Iowa. Rick Rickard somehow gets that to go. Little spin, lefty hook, Gophers by nine. Iowa makes a run. Luke Recker, man on top of him. Quick release, nails a three. It's an eight-point game. 
Minnesota with a little more. Dusty Reichart, old jumper, and Iowa dropped again, 86-78. Minnesota making a statement. Watch them in the Big Ten Conference tournament because they can still earn an NCAA bid. Xavier and St. Bonaventure late in the second half. Bonnie's down three. J.R. Bremer, and the foul. 73-73. Less than 12 seconds to go. Xavier down four. David Young on the run. Stops. Look at that. Triggers a three. Xavier within one with 6.8 left. A lot of time ensuing play. Inbounds. Romain Sato steals the pass. Goes up for the win. And it just misses Xavier. A 12-game winning streak. Snap. St. Bonaventure. It's the one-point win. Fans having a good time. Wouldn't end there. Second half. Less than a minute to go. Baylor down by two. Baylor and Missouri. John Lucas. John Lucas. By the screen. Knocks down a three. It's a one-point game. Missouri comes right back. Ricky Paulding to Arthur Johnson. Inside for two. Missouri by one. Seven seconds to go. After two Baylor free throws. Put them up on top. Kareem Rush. Up. And uh, that won't go. Not even close. 81 to 80. Missouri dropped on the road at Waco.